With the new plants and additions now under construction, Alcoa's annual production will be raised to 1,300,000,000 pounds. Four times as much as 1939. In this way, Alcoa continues to meet its responsibility as the leading producer of a vital metal, aluminum by Alcoa, Aluminum Company of America. These are days of mechanical and electronic marvels. The Massachusetts Institute of Technology has developed a new one for the Navy. It's a whirlwind electronic computer. With considerable trepidation, we undertake to interview this new machine. Now to MIT in the computer lab at Cambridge, Massachusetts. Hello, New York. Hello, New York. This is Cambridge. And this is the oscilloscope of the whirlwind electronic computer. I assume that, like any delicate, finely tuned piece of mechanism, this uh, has a human element involved, too, has it? Yes, Mr. Morrow. I am uh, Dave Forrest, sir, director of the Digital Computer Laboratory, where Whirlwind was built. Well, I wonder if uh, we could take a look around, sir. Yes. Uh, let's uh, first look at one of the uh, storage tubes, uh, such as the Whirlwind uses for memory. Whirlwind stores in these tubes uh, information in 25 millionths of a second. And further down the row, you can see some of the electronic circuits uh, which make Whirlwind work. Would you uh, like to try to use the machine? Yes, of course, but I have an idea, Mr. Forrester. Since this computer was made in conjunction with the Office of Naval Research, why don't we switch down to the Pentagon in Washington and let the Navy's research chief, Admiral Bolster, give Whirlwind the workout. Uh, what's your problem, Admiral? Well, Ed, this problem concerns the Navy's Viking rocket. This rocket goes up 135 miles into the sky. Now, at the standard rate of fuel consumption, I would like to see the computer trace the flight path of this rocket and see how it can determine at any instant, say at the end of 40 seconds, the amount of fuel remaining and the velocity at that instant. The rocket weighs 11,000 pounds at takeoff and carries an initial fuel load of 8,500 pounds. All right, Mr. Foster. All right, uh, Admiral Bolster, we'll uh, see what we can do. Let's uh, look at the uh, oscilloscope where the uh, uh, problem has been set up. Over on the left-hand uh, side, you will notice fuel consumption decreasing as the rocket takes off. And on the right-hand side, there's a scale that shows the uh, rocket velocity. The uh, rocket uh, position is shown by the trajectory that uh, you're now looking at, and uh, as it reaches the peak of its uh, trajectory, the velocity you will notice has dropped off to a minimum. Then as the rocket starts down, velocity picks uh, up again toward a maximum velocity when the rocket hits the ground. How's that? Well, how about that, Admiral? Looks very good to me. <laughs> well, sir, I'm just a middleman here. I didn't understand the question, and I don't understand the answer. <laughs> But now let's go back to MIT for a moment. Uh, are you there, Mr. Foster? Yes, uh, Mr. Morrow. Well, let's try another problem on a little more personal level. Let's suppose that back in 1626, I had been an Indian, and I had received for the sale of Manhattan Island, uh, say, $24. And uh, if I'd been out covering the story for TV, and then I'd invested that $24 at 6% interest back in 1626, what would I have today? Well, that would be a good investment. To set up such a problem on the uh, machine, we uh, first have to uh, prepare a control tape, something like this, where the uh, information from the machine has been punched in. That tape is then read into the computer, as you can see over uh, here, and fed into the uh, storage tube in the other uh, uh, room, where the information is remembered until uh, the uh, machine starts a, a solution to the problem. Now, uh, the machine started the solution, we see here, typing out the uh, answers on a uh, typewriter. Uh, from 1926 until 1951, your $24 would have uh, grown to something like uh, $4,027,727,000 and some odd cents. Uh, do you think that would be a good uh, investment? Thank you, sir, very much indeed. Someday I'll ask you to figure out whether that is before or after taxes. Very fascinating, Mr. Foster. Uh, very good to uh, have had you uh, with us, uh, Mr. Morrow. And uh, before uh, leaving, uh, we would like to uh, show you another kind of mathematical problem that uh, some of the boys have worked out in uh, their spare time in a less uh, serious vein for Sunday afternoon.
Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Foster and the MIT lab. This next story is an American story, so American that it could only happen in Korea, Italy, Germany, France, anywhere in the world where American fighting men have gone. In this time when we're worried about international crises and new electronic brains and tax scandals and peace conferences at Panmunjom, we thought it might be useful to picture a piece of invisible equipment that is carried in the packs of American GIs. They called it Operation Mascot. <laughs> 